Hey, welcome to my new series. Uh, the series is about creating drone videos, um, editing drone videos to be more specific. Um, the idea is to provide a bit of help for people who just get into the editing, who maybe have used something like um, the DJI's app automatic video creation, um, iMovie, um, the Microsoft Movie Editor, Movie Maker, whatever it's called. Or, or Instagram's editor, all those those tools that mostly do automatic or just allow you to to, to put a few other clips in there. Now, um, if you really want to make your video special, you have to do a bit more. You have to put in a lot of work, and you have to know a few things. And this this is where this series comes in. I want to actually help you um, to get where you can create those kinds of videos that you see on YouTube every day. So the, the, this first episode is, uh, I call it episode zero. Episode zero is basically um, episode zero because it doesn't really teach you that much yet. It's more about um, a bit of what you need to have to make drone videos or what you should have. Um, obviously the first thing is having a drone um, and that should be one that has image stabilization and ideally this that is optical image stabilization by using a gimbal or something like that and not digital image, image stabilization which usually is just cropping into the uh, footage. Um, now the drones that I'm using are drones by DJI. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not sponsored by any of the brands that I'm going to name in this video, just, just so you know. But um, DJI is currently the market leader for camera drones and there is basically no real competition to them. Um, there is unique with their um, H series drone, which is interesting, but that's not a beginner's drone. And there is a few other ones who have created drones, but none of them has the stability or the image quality of DJI at the moment. So the first thing that you need is your drone. You need to go out, you need to fly it, and you need to have, know how to fly to make nice images. Um, there is a ton of videos on YouTube about uh, creating video with a drone, meaning recording it. I just search for cinematic drone uh, on YouTube and you will find a lot of tutorials, a lot of videos where people tell you what they think is the most important things that you need to know to create cinematic looking video with your drone. Um, the most important things are stuff like fly in a straight line, um, plan your flights, stuff like that. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into that much detail just go to YouTube, enter the search term, you'll be fine. And actually I might might be able to put a few links in here, but no promise made on that. So the next thing once you have, have your footage is usually you want to have some music as well. well obviously you could be using this in a, in a different way, but um, Music is, is something very, very important uh, in, in those videos, or even if, if you're using the drone footage only as a scene in your vlog or whatever, um, having, having a bit of music that, that goes well with the scenery is what's actually getting you, no, I'm sorry, that's what's actually getting the viewer involved emotionally with the scene. Now, um, the easiest way for you to obtain music that you can use where no one will see you and stuff like that is to use um, YouTube's audio library. Um, you can fly, find that in YouTube's Creator Studio um, under the tab Create Audio Library. Uh, all the music that's in the audio library is something that you can use completely for free. You can still monetize the videos if you're a partner of YouTube. Um, and you can simply use this music. There's a lot of good music in there. The downside is that the music in there, every single song you will have heard, at least in two or three other YouTube videos. 
but it's a good start. Now if you don't want to monetize, if you are fine with someone else monetizing your videos, um, you can also go to the music policies tab in Create and you can search for music there. Um, basically this is a library of all the music that has been submitted to YouTube um, where the copyright holder has set the policy. The policy um, might be something like, oh, let's, let's, let's have a look on, on one of it. Um, you might remember Psy's Gangnam Style, great song, love it. Um, so how does the policy for that look? If you use this song, your video, if your video will be viewable worldwide. That, that should be important to you. <laughs> Um, but ads can appear. Well, you will find this ads can appear in every single one of them. I've not seen one of them that doesn't have it. Maybe there is one, I haven't seen it. Um, this means that there might be ads in front of your video, there might be ads during your video. Those ads are um, basically run by YouTube and the money that is made with those ads will go to YouTube and to the creator of the music. You will not get anything of that. Um, if you perform a cover, well, we don't need to talk about that because it's not in the scope of this video, but you sometimes have different um, options in the policy for covers. So if you, if you play the guitar, I don't know, if you do something like that, maybe that's an option for you. But you still should check that you have the permission to do this stuff and you can do that in this very uh, tab. Um, I'm going to go back to the audio library for a second. Um, that's important too. I skipped over it. Um, the songs that are in the free music here, um, they all also have a description here. Uh, most of them say you're free to use the song in any of your videos. Um, one important thing for you to know is you should really read this because some of them require you to give credit at least in the description or within the video. They will have it in their description here. Uh, I, I don't recall from scratch a video that does that otherwise I would have shown it to you but you should know that you should read the description. It's very very important. Now um, the thing is that you might want to have music on there that's not monetized by someone else and that's not been played to death by other videos on YouTube, um, which means you have to buy music from somewhere else. Um, now there is a few websites and I'm going to, to link them down below that um, for a subscription fee allow you to use their music. Um, the two most common ones are Epidemic Sound, uh, which would be this nice page here. Um, Epidemic is the cheaper one of the two. It is very, very popular. Um, you have heard songs of Epidemic on channels like uh, Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon, uh, Travel Fields, they all use music from Epidemic Sound, um, which means that a lot of those tracks on here have been used by other people too, but not as much as the ones from the YouTube library. Um, there is quite a few very high quality tra tracks in Epidemic Sound. I used to use Epidemic Sound. Um, there's also a lot of boring stuff in there. Um, I decided to, to switch to the second vendor, the second website, which is Artlist.io. Uh, Artlist.io similar has a subscription model. They only do a yearly subscription, so you have to put in quite a chunk of money right away. I think it was like 200 euros for a year. Um, once you have done that, you can use all of the music, um, you can use it commercially. You should really read the license that they have, but um, they allow a lot more and they allow their artists a lot more. That was one of the things that convinced me was that they 
seem to be a lot more fair to their artists as well. Um, their selection is smaller than the one of Epidemic Sound, but uh, I personally think it's more quality. Um, if you have the high quality tracks from Epidemic, they're as good as the ones from Artlist, but uh, Artlist does not have as many low quality. Quality is not the right word, but not as many boring tracks as Epidemic has. So this, this, this just has a few ideas where you can get music. Uh, obviously there are other options. There's websites like Pond5. There is, uh, well, you might have a friend who's an artist and is going to help you out. There, there, there's many ways how you can get music, but if you don't know where to get it, you have a start here. Um, I might go into a bit more of about music in a, in a full episode later on, um, but it is important that you have music and that you are allowed to use that, mu that music in your video, otherwise your video can get you a strike on YouTube and that you don't want, want to have those because those can get you banned. Alright, um, so you have the drone footage, you have some music. Uh, what is missing? Obviously, you have a computer. Without a computer, you cannot do this. And this can either be a Mac or a Windows PC, or maybe even a Linux PC, even though I personally didn't really um, find all the tools that I'm using um, or an equivalent that worked as well on Linux. However, uh, I'm going to mention this again in a moment. Um, I'm now going to show you a few tools that are available. Um, the first one is if you're on a Mac, you can get Final Cut Pro X by Apple. Um, I've used it like 12 years ago, 14 years ago, or more 12 than 14. It's a great tool. It's used professionally. It can do everything you, you want from a tool like that. Then there is, um, well, just, just one thing, obviously, it's not cheap. Let's see what the price is currently. Those, those tools have all come down in price a lot in the last few years. I can remember times when tools like this were, well, in the four figures range. Uh, well, this is about 300 bucks right now. That is a pretty fair price, I guess, for the quality software that you're getting. Um, but this will nail you down to working on a Macintosh, which is good enough. I mean, I, I love Apple computers, don't get me wrong, but again, they are expensive. So if you, if you are low on money or if you insist on working on Linux, uh, you can use DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is available from Blackmagic Design, which is actually a company that's creating a lot of hardware, broadcast hardware, um, hardware for professional use. And DaVinci Resolve is famous for their color correction options. Um, the image you see on their web page right away shows a possible workspace. Um, Obviously, you do not need all that stuff to work with DaVinci Resolve. A PC, a Linux PC, a Windows PC will do. Don't know if there is a Mac version as well, I don't think so. Um, the thing is that there is a free version of DaVinci, DaVinci Resolve and there is um, a paid version. The paid version is, I believe, somewhere around 200 bucks. The free version has a few limitations. Um, one of the most annoying things that I found was that the free version does not support all formats that the full version does or that the other tools do. Um, for example, the, the free version cannot work with MP3. Um, the free version has problems playing back sound uh, with some formats. So uh, DaVinci Resolve to me was always, when I tried it, 
a lot of extra work because I had to convert everything I have into formats that DaVinci Resolve can work with. That said, there is still a free version and that's amazing. You get a, a full-blown professional editor for free there. So this might be an option for you. Personally, I'm going to stick with the third option, uh, which is Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere, again, is a professional tool. All three of them are used in professional movie making, in professional creation. Um, so you cannot go really wrong with one of them. Uh, one of them might have a bit more work for you to do or a feature more or less than the other ones, but all three of those tools will get you there. So the website of Premiere, I don't know why Adobe is doing that. Whenever I open it, it's in German. My system language is English. Everything, I've said everything to English, still I get German. I don't know why Adobe hates me, maybe because I am German. Um, I'm going to show you Adobe Premiere on my machine so you have an idea how it looks. Um, this is a, a typical view for editing. Um, you have a timeline here. You have your project uh, with all the files in your project here. Um, you, you might have a monitor, which I'm not having anything in right now. Um, I can actually show you what the monitor does. The monitor allows you to go through your footage and cut the parts out from, from the scene that you actually want. You can see I have an in point here and an out point. If I drag this on the timeline, as you can see here, I only get this, this small part. Um, then you have the, the actual uh, clip. If I move the playhead here, you can see this is the, the edited clip. Um, this, is, this is a video I published a while ago and um, I'm going into more of the details on what you can do here uh, later in the series. I'm going to be using Adobe Premiere in the series, so it might be a reason to go for Premiere, might not be. I'm not going to do really Premiere tutorials. Uh, I'm usually going to say stuff like Guys, there is a lot of Premiere tutorials out there. If you Google for, uh, if you if you search on YouTube for this and this words, you will find a ton of videos that explain you how to do. I don't know how to, how to do uh, how to do time ramping, which is uh, something I've used quite extensively in this video. And then I will explain to you what time ramping is and how you can use it in your video. But I'm not going to go through every single detail on how to create time ramps, how to work with them, because that is dependent on your tool. I'm obviously going to do it in the video for um, Adobe Premiere, but I'm not going to explain every press of a button because as I said, there's other videos out there that do that already and this is not what the series is about. All right, I think this is um, a good moment to, to stop the first video. Uh, looking at my sound recording, this is already a lot longer than I thought this would be and I'm seeing you soon for the first episode, the real first episode of this series. Have a nice evening and see you soon.